Hello everyone, I am Summary Movie, and today we are going to watch a film called Goodwill Hunting, which was released in 1997. Let's start. The story begins at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. A teacher named Gerald Lambeau gives his math lesson. At the end of his course, he announced to his graduate students that he will write a very difficult mathematics problem on the table outside the class, and that the one who will solve him will see his name inscribed on MIT Tech. He also encourages his students by telling them that among students who have already solved this problem are high-level mathematicians. Given the difficulty of this question, Professor Gerald gives it until the end of the semester to resolve it. The course ends and we then see Will Hunting, a MIT concierge, looking at the mathematics problem written by Professor Gerald. Later, Will returns home and tries to solve this equation on the bathroom mirror. The next day, while he is alone in the corridor, he took a chalk and wrote the answer to the problem that Professor Gerald had prepared for his students. Outside of work, Will spends his time drinking and hanging out with his friends Chucky, Billy, and Morgan. One day, while watching a children's baseball match, Will notices a guy he was intimidating at school. Later, with his friends, he sees this guy and begins to fight. At the end, Will takes over his draft and beats him mercilessly. His friends stop him, and as the police tried to hold him back, he attacks a police officer who is arrested. Professor Gerald, on the other hand, is informed by his students that the mathematics problem is solved. He will immediately check and sees that someone has really resolved his question. He asks some students if they have solved the problem. But he remains perplexed when none of his students confirms who really solved the problem. His next lesson is crowded because everyone wants to know who is the mysterious genius of mathematics. Professor Gerald asks the person to present himself and claim his prize. But the whole class remains there to look at each other waiting for someone to advance. As no one claims to have resolved his question, Professor Gerald announces to his students that he wrote another mathematics problem that it took him two years to solve. Not knowing who is the anonymous genius of mathematics, Professor Gerald launched a challenge. Will, meanwhile, comes out of prison and almost immediately resolved the problem. At the same time, Professor Gerald leaves his office and sees Will writing on the board. He tries to confront him by thinking that he only graffiti on the board. Seeing him coming to him, Will fled from the scene. It was not until later that Professor Gerald returns and saw that Will solved the problem, which took him two years. He now knows who is really the mysterious genius of mathematics. After work, Will finds his friends and goes to a bar to take some drinks. Seeing a couple of beautiful women, Chucky approaches them and begins to flirt. To impress girls, Chucky lies by saying that he is in the same class as they. At that time, a man interrupts him and asks him what class it is exactly, to which Chucky answers, history. The man is in the same class as the two girls, he therefore knows that Chucky is lying. He tries to put Chucky in embarrassment by asking him what he thinks of historical questions. Not being a history student, Chucky remains silent. Will then takes the place of his friend and begins the debate with the man by exhibiting facts and his own ideas. The man retorts something, but Will cuts him and completes his sentence before reproaching him to recite a word for a word of a book. Will makes fun of this type which spends thousands of dollars for a formerly he obtained free of charge in a public library. After being embarrassed by Will, the man leaves. Later, one of the girls, Skylar, comes to see Will and gives him his phone number. Impressed by the intelligence shown by Will, Skylar asks him to call him so that they can go for a drink together in the future. Will shows his number to the type who tries to be clever. Meanwhile, Professor Gerald is looking for the concierge who has solved these complex mathematical problems. After asking a few people, he finally obtained Will's contact details. He appeared at Will's hearing in the assault of a police officer. Will defends himself in this case, but the judge tells him that he has many history of small flights and assaults. The judge says that he cannot close his eyes to everything Will's doing and sentences him to a prison sentence with a deposit of $50,000. With that, Will is sent to prison, but he met Professor Gerald, who has a proposal to make him. He told her that he spoke to the judge and that he is ready to pardon her, but that Will must accept two conditions. The first condition is that Will takes mathematics lessons with Professor Gerald, and the second condition is that he follows therapy. Will laughs and says he can see a therapist. But to avoid prison, he has no choice but to accept all the conditions imposed on him. Very quickly, he started taking mathematics lessons with Professor Gerald, who is amazed and proud of Will's intelligence. Then he must follow the advice of a therapist. But despite the number of visits he returns him, Will refuses to open and even laughs at them. He reads their book the previous night and laughs at them during his consultation. As a last resort, Professor Gerald asks for help from his old friend Sean McGuire, who now teaches psychology in a community college. Sean first says that he doesn't have time to do that. 
But Professor Gerald insists that he must help Will saying that he is a genius and that his advice can help Will to reach the best in his life. Sean finally accepts and meets Will. During his first therapy session, Sean asked Professor Gerald and his assistant to leave the room. As with his previous therapists, Will begins to make fun of the collection of books from Sean. Sean knows that this is Will's defense mechanism, and he deliberately tries to make him angry. He then keeps his calm and hired a normal conversation with Will without asking anything about his life. Will then notices a painting which was painted by Sean himself. Looking at the painting and citing several art books, Will makes several erroneous assumptions about Sean's life. Once again, Sean does not react to Will's insults. But when the latter evokes his wife in the conversation, Sean is a little irritated. Will realizes that Sean's weak point is his wife, so he continues to talk about it. He asked if Sean's wife has cheated on her. Sean completely loses his head and catches Will by the throat. He warns Will never lack respect for his wife. At that time, Will told Sean that the session is over. Sean lets him go and Will leaves believing that he still managed to break a therapist. Seeing Sean's mood, Professor Gerald thinks that he will not agree to do other sessions with Will. But surprisingly, Sean asks to continue his sessions with Will from next week. After his advice session, Will goes out with Skylar. During their appointment, Will discovers that Skylar comes from a very rich family and that they are studying at Harvard. The two men immediately get along and appreciate the time spent together. To finish the night of their first meeting, they even share a kiss. The following week, Will presents himself to the Sean office who asks him to come outside with him. Sean takes Will in a park and speaks to him. He told Will that he thought a lot about what he told him about his painting, and that after a while, he realized that Will is only a child who does not know what he is talking about. Sean tells Will that just as he cannot make any assumption about someone else's life by reading a few art books, he cannot talk about Will's problems with just a diploma in psychology. Sean says he understands that Will does not want to talk because he is afraid of what he is going to say, but at one point, he will have to start talking. Otherwise, he will never know the best things in life. Will returns to his life where his friend Chucky comes to pick him up and leads him to their workplace on a site. He calls Skylar but is afraid to speak to him. During his third therapy session with Sean, Will does not say a word and Sean either. They keep silence throughout the hour. The fourth session begins in the same way, Will not saying a word. But then out of boredom, Will tells a joke in Sean. Seizing the opportunity, Sean asks him if he has a girlfriend. Will that toss him about Skylar and the fact that he is not in contact with her since their first appointment. Sean asks why and Will replies that he thinks Skylar is too good for him and that if he continues to speak to him, it will spoil everything. Sean then told him that no one is never too good or perfect. Everyone has faults, but what matters most is whether this person is perfect for you or not. For the message to be clearer for Will, Sean tells him that his wife, the most beautiful person he has ever seen, and the one he fell in love was used to farting in his sleep. This changes the entire atmosphere of the room. Will and Sean laugh uncontrollable. At that time, they get closer to each other and Will begins to feel comfortable with Sean. The session ends with Sean, who advises Will not think that Skylar is too good for him. Rather, he should ask himself if they are happy together. Will is so focused on what Sean has just told him that it must be reminded that their session is over. Encouraged by Sean's words, Will goes to Skylar's last and asks him again to go out with him. Skylar replies that she wants to go out with him, but that she has a very complex problem to solve, which can take hours or even days. Will can no longer wait to see her, so he solves the problem on a table towel and gives it to her. Without anything to fear, Skylar and Will come out for the second time together. Skylar questions Will on his family and he lies with him, telling him that he has 12 brothers. Skylar asks Will to tell him the name of each of his brothers, and Will answers by 12 names taken at random in a sequence. Doubt that Will tells the truth, Skylar asks him to repeat everything. But as a good genius he is, Will repeats the names in the right order. He meets Sean at his next therapy session and asks him if he has never regretted having met his wife. Since after his death, he ended up with great pain to manage. To answer his question, Sean tells him the story of his meeting with his wife. He says he saw his wife for the first time when he was lining up with his friends to get tickets for what was going to be an emblematic baseball match. Will enthuses by thinking that Sean watched this match live in the audience and not on television. He asks questions about this moment and Sean details everything that happened during the match. But Sean reveals that he watched the match a little late on television while he left his friends to go out with the girl he had just met, the one who was going to become his wife. Will cannot believe that Sean has given up a historic match just to spend time with a girl. Coming back to Will's question, Sean replies that he never regretted not having watched this match live in the audience, and that he certainly regrets having met his wife and having had him in his life even if it was only for a few years. While they are together, Skylar asks Will to present him to his friends and family. 
Will always lies on his life, but he reluctantly accepts to present him to his friends. Skylar and Will and his friends find themselves in a bar, and Skylar seems to appreciate his friends. She appreciates the time she spends with them and makes some jokes that make everyone laugh. Meanwhile, Professor Gerald questions Sean about Will's progress. Sean replies that Will slowly started opening, but he needs more time before feeling completely comfortable. To talk about his life and the reasons why he is afraid of trusting someone. Professor Gerald reveals that he organized job interviews for Will in the best mathematics institutes. And that once his mental problems have disappeared, nothing will prevent him from making a name for himself in the field of mathematics. Sean protests that he should not be what decides on Will's life and that he should support him in what he wants to do. But Professor Gerald is categorical. He will not leave Will's talent to get lost. However, Will does not want to get a job like this, so he sends his friend Chucky to the maintenance in his place. One evening when they talk about their lives, Skylar asks Will to move to California with her. Hearing what Skylar wants, Will begins to panic and says that he cannot move with her. Skylar asks her why he is afraid to get involved with her and why she never tells her the truth. She evokes the way Will lied to him, saying that he had 12 brothers. After being treated as a liar, Will completely loses his cool. He tells him that he was an orphan and that he spent most of his life spending from one foster family to another. He also tells him that he was mistreated and beaten by his adoptive father. Skylar starts to cry and tells Will that she wants to be with him and help him. But Will pushes her back up, saying he doesn't need anyone's help. It is clear that Will is afraid of abandonment because he believes that the people he loves will leave his life. Skylar cries by saying that she really loves her and that she will not leave him. But Will lies that he does not like him in return and goes out, letting Skylar cry alone in his room. After being convinced by Professor Gerald, Will agrees to go to a job interview. Will presents himself to the interview but has no attempt to be hired. During his therapy session with Sean, he is asked who he trusts the most in life. Will answers Chucky. Sean says he understands that Chucky would give his life for Will, but that he will not understand his deep feelings. Sean asks him how he intends to earn a living. Will replies that he will work as a building worker in Boston for the rest of his life. Sean criticizes Will for being afraid of leaving his comfort space, and that prevents him from living his best life. Sean does not force him to accept the work that Professor Gerald has planned for him. But he asks Will what he really wants to do in his life. Will replies that he wants to be a shepherd. Knowing that Will is not serious, Sean asks him to leave his office. He says he doesn't want to waste his time if Will intends to be honest. Will gets angry and starts to shout on Sean that he asks again what he wants to do in life. Will remains silent and does not answer. So Sean asks him to leave. Before Skylar could leave for California, Will calls him to say goodbye. Skylar, in the hope of getting back with Will, tells him that she loves him. Will smiles, but he does not have the courage to tell him in return for fear of being shattered. During his conversation with Chucky, Will tells him that he does not plan to find a job, and that he also broke with Skylar. When asked what he wants to do for the rest of his life, Will replies that he plans to live in Boston forever, to be neighbor with Chucky and to work with him on construction. Hearing his answer, Will becomes honest with him. He tells Will that it hurts him to see his friend spoil his life when he can do more and be happy in his life. Chucky says he has only one wish, Every day when he comes to pick up Will at his home, he wants Will not to be there. Chucky wants Will to leave his awful life and are starting to do something to give meaning to his life. Meanwhile, Professor Gerald argued with Sean on the fact that he failed to persuade Will to find a job and to use your intelligence to do something significant in your life. Sean claims that he should not rush to make Will make important decisions in his life when he is not sure of what he wants to do. He explains that Will is afraid of abandonment and that he pushes people again before getting closer to them. Sean says he should support Will in what he wants to do and not force him to find a job he could end up hate. But Professor Gerald does not agree. He warns Sean not to let Will think that he is normal, that he does not use his intelligence, and that he spends his life as a failure. Their divergent points of view turn into an animated discussion. Professor Gerald accuses Sean of being jealous of his success and his achievements. Sean replies that he is not a failure because he has never chosen to be like him. At that time, Will enters and hears their conversation. Professor Gerald leaves the play to let their therapy session start. Sean has a file in which he has photos of the body of Will, filled with teammates due to the blow he received from his adoptive father. Will asks if he has already seen something like that before. Sean then revealed that his father was an alcoholic and used to beat him and his mother when he was a child. Hearing Sean's story, Will remembers his adoptive father. Sean advances before Will and tells him that what happened to him is not his fault. Will nods, but Sean repeats that it is not his fault. Will replies that he knows it is not his fault. But Sean continues to repeat that Will was never responsible for what happened to him. Will begins to cry and pushes Sean. Sean repeats to him that the ill treatment he suffered in his childhood are not his fault. Will ends up giving in to his emotion and takes Sean in his arms. It's hot tears while tightening Sean in his arms. 
he is finally ready to leave his past behind him and move forward in his life. He told Sean that he wants to accept one of his jobs that Professor Gerald offered him. So his last therapy session with Sean is over. Will asks if he can stay in touch with him. Sean replies that he is still there for him and tells him to do what his heart wants. Will kisses Sean before telling him a last goodbye. For his 21st birthday, Chucky, Billy, and Morgan offer him a car. The car is not brand new, but Will is happy with the gift because he comes from his friends. Meanwhile, Professor Gerald sees Sean and apologizes for what he told him. The two friends reconcile and Sean announces to him that he is going to take a tour of the world. While Sean luggage, Will goes to his home and watches him prepare for his trip. Will heads for the front door and puts a letter in Sean's mailbox before leaving. Meanwhile, Chucky will get Will from him. He knocks on the door but obtains no answer. He takes a look by the window and sees that Will is not at home. Chucky smiles by realizing that Will finally decided to do with his life. Sean also receives the letter left by Will. In this letter, Will writes that he does not script the post and that he leaves for California to meet Skyler. Sean smiles and returns home. The film ends while we see Will on the way back with Skyler. Thank you very much for watching the film. Tell us what you think below in the comment section. If you liked it, leave a comment and also watch our other videos. And before leaving, rest assured to subscribe to the channel for other film summaries.